Hi, I'm Claudia and this is Body Club. So today we're going to do a restorative yoga class that will be about 20 minutes long. What's amazing about restorative yoga is you don't need a mat, you just need some props. So I've got here a bolster and some cushions and blocks. If you haven't got a bolster, you could use sofa cushions or a big pile of pillows. We'll hold each pose for about three minutes. But if you want to hold it longer, then you can just pause the video and set a timer for 5, 10 or even 15 minutes per pose. This yoga is um, suitable for all bodies and the aim of restorative yoga is to completely relax and feel as comfortable as possible. Okay, so I'm going to set a timer and each one will be three minutes long. I won't do too much talking because the emphasis is for you to be within your own body sensations. You don't have to control the breath in the same way as you do in other types of yoga. It's more about observing what happens with the natural breath and the postures will facilitate a deeper, more easeful, long, restful breath. Okay, so we're going to begin in a supportive child pose. So you have your bolster along here, knees wide, big toes together. And then bringing the body supported by the bolster with the head to one side. Closing your eyes. So start to soften the body. Let the weight of the body be what helps you to release down. You may notice the breath in the back body. Restorative yoga is amazing if you've got stress or anxiety because it promotes the relaxation response in the body. So rather than being in fight or flight active mode, you can enter into rest and digest, where the blood flow increases to the organs, muscles can relax. and you can start to restore the body's natural state of health. Releasing and letting go. Letting go of the physical body Letting go of emotions, of thoughts, and observing the breath. And if you like, at this point, you can change your head to face the other way. Some people find that that's not comfortable, so just do whatever's comfortable for you. And if you need to move the body at all, you can so that you're really comfortable. Good. And then pressing into the arms, coming to sit back towards the heels. 
we'll come into the next posture, which is going to be legs up wall. So bringing your bolster to the wall, or you could have some folded cushion, a folded blanket or cushion. Right. So it's best to come from the side and then have your bum close to the wall, then swiveling your legs up. You might need to use your elbows to bring you closer to the wall. So you want to feel that your buttocks are actually touching. This pose can also be done on a chair. So you would have your legs perpendicular and resting on a chair. That can be really good if you've got tight hamstrings or if you haven't got a wall. Your legs don't have to be straight. Hands can be out to the sides or resting on the abdomen. And there's nothing you have to do here. Just simply by being in this shape, you're benefiting the body in many ways. This pose is particularly good for calming anxiety, for relieving fatigue, particularly in the legs if you've been standing all day. And you'll probably feel that it really slows the heart rate down. If you're in your menstruating time, you might not want to have your pelvis elevated, so you could just have it flat on the floor. Closing your eyes and letting go. Yielding to gravity. This pose is also very nourishing for the brain. Having your heart above your brain in terms of location means that there's increased blood flow to the brain. Check that your jaw is soft and your face is relaxing. Good, and that's three minutes. So to come out, bend the knees. You can either shift the support to the side and then come down, or straight away roll onto your side. Use one hand to push yourself up. Great. So the next posture we're going to do is Sukta Baddha Kamasana, which means supported bound angle pose. In this one you want plenty of height for the head and a pile of cushions or a bolster to support the body. So you sit off the bolster and you want two supports, either cushions or blocks for your knees or thighs. Bring the soles of the feet together and then lie back onto the bolster, supporting the thighs with the bricks. If it doesn't feel comfortable in your lower back, I would advise just lying flat on the floor. Good. So this is an incredible posture. It's really good if you've got any digestive problems because it brings a lot of space to the abdominal organ. It stimulates blood flow and lymph and nerve health. 
particularly to the re reproductive organ. So close your eyes and rest your arms out to the sides, palms facing up. Release muscles in the jaw. Let the breath flow in its own natural way. And one thing that's uh, really good about this posture as well is it's a, a mini back bend. And back bends are energizing. So if you're tired or you've been ill and you don't have the strength to do a full yoga practice, doing this posture can really elevate your energy. But it's passive because you don't have to do anything other than relax. Good. So to come out of this posture, bring the soles of your feet to the floor and knees together. Then use your hands or elbows to slowly push you up to sitting. Good. The next posture we're going to do is a forward fold. So you can use a chair for this one, depending on how open your hips are. So I'm going to sit on a bolster. You don't have to sit on anything. I'll just demonstrate with a chair. So you're sitting cross-legged. Let's take a cushion. And then you're bringing your head to some support. So if you feel quite flexible, then you might just use a pile of bricks with a blanket or a cushion on it, this kind of thing. So one word, when you cross your legs, you want to cross them well so that the feet are directly under the knees, toes pointing forward and shins almost parallel to the wall in front of you. And then when you fold forward, you'll really feel the opening in the hips. Good. So we'll do this for a minute or so and then change to the other side. Make sure it's the forehead that's supported. And in that way, the front body lengthens. So this pose for women, it's particularly healthy for the ovaries because it stimulates blood flow to that area. It's also really good for anybody with tight hips. So it can be a great one to do if you've got sciatica or any lower back problems. Soften the jaw and watch the breath as it comes in and out. So you might feel this in the back body as well as the hips and buttocks. It can be really helpful for upper back pain too because it passively stretches the back body. So we'll just change the cross of the legs now to the other side. Check again that the feet are under the knees. And I didn't say on the other side, but if the knees aren't feeling comfortable, you could also support the knees. Oops with cushions. So you could do something like that. Good. And then as you come forward, that should really help you to yield to gravity and to soften.
So in restorative yoga, we stimulate the parasympathetic nervous system, the one that promotes the rest and digest state, which means that muscles can relax, breath slows and deepens, and stress hormones start to come down. So in this state, the body prioritizes blood flow to the organs, which is contrary to fight or flight when the blood flow is pumped to only the kind of most important organs. So this is why this posture is really good for digestion and it also benefits the immune system. Noticing if the breath has become smoother and if it's deepened. Finding release in the jaw and the throat. If there's anywhere else, that can let go. Good. So we're going to do one more before Shavasana, which is um, a, a lying down twist. So it's good to have something to rest your knees on. That might be a blanket or a cushion. Today I'm going to use a bolster. Place the bolster alongside the right side of your body. Bring your knees close in and then the knees come out to the side. So they're towards your right elbow. Arms out in a T shape, palms facing up towards the sky. You can have more height under the knees if this left arm is hovering in the air. And you can also have no sort support at all if your spine feels very flexible. It can be really nice to rest the hand on the knees to help secure that leg down and you'll probably find you, you can get a deeper twist in the back. So again, practicing doing nothing, being passive, allowing gravity to do the work. Releasing through the jaw and the throat. Releasing anywhere that's holding on and can let go. This pose is amazing for upper back pain. It, it twists the spine just in the right place if you've been working a computer, cycling on a bike, anything that requires folding forward, which is quite a lot of thing. I always end my yoga practice with this posture because it releases any tension from the spine and can allow you to then rest 
really comfortably in your final Shavasana corpse pose. Good, so I'll bring it to the other side. This time I'll just bring my bolster over to the other side. Realign the spine so you're comfortable. Arms out to the sides in a T shape. Knees coming close to the body, bent, and then dropping over to the other side. Good. Closing the eyes here. And looking wherever's comfortable on the neck. generally takes a whole minute for your body to really release into a posture. At the beginning the body kind of holds on until it knows it's safe. So I invite you to notice the changes over the next minute or so and perhaps your arm or shoulder releases more down to the floor. Perhaps you feel that release in your belly or you feel the knees come closer to the floor. Good. And then releasing from this by rolling onto your back. And then finding a way to come up. That's keeping that state of rest in your body. Good. So the final pose, Shavasana, meaning corpse pose. Lying down on the floor. Make sure that you've got something to support your head, not something too high. Just about an inch folded up blanket or a cushion like this. Then when you lie down, if you have any tightness in your lower back, then place something under the knees, maybe a rolled up yoga mat or a bolster like I've got here. And then cover up with a blanket so that you're really warm because when we relax, our body temperature can start to drop. Good, so palms facing up in Shavasana. But there's always the option to place your right hand on your belly, left hand somewhere else on the body. You can sometimes, if you have any um, ailments, then, then placing your hands on the body where you feel that discomfort can be really beneficial. Good. Checking your shoulder blades are walked un well under the body. Closing your eyes. Allowing the skin that is in contact with the floor to spread. Drifting your awareness around your body, noticing any areas that feel they can let go and release. And 
perhaps even having a moment of gratitude and appreciation for the floor, for the floor that is supporting you and allowing you to really let go and be held. Bring the body into a state of deep release and calm. And perhaps noticing some sense of spaciousness in the mind. So that brings us to the end of this session. Of course, if you want to stay longer, feel free to do so. So you can think of restorative yoga as an embodied form of meditation. It's deeply healing for all systems of the body, restful for the mind, and restorative if you've been tired, stressed or ill, it can make you feel so much better. That brings us to the end. Thank you to Body Club and um, thank you for joining me. Namaste.